All right, and a couple things I'm going to get knocked out of the way really quick before we go ahead and get started is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, heads-up display that's showing the polygon count. I'm going to go ahead and go down to window. I'm sorry, I'm going to go up to display, heads-up display, poly count. I'll open up our workspace a little bit more. And let's see, and I think it should be good for now. Any other thing is I'm going to change, I'll go ahead and I'll do that later. Oh, I can uh, do the normal maps really quick as well. So if I hold, if I click and hold down right click, go down to material attributes and the armor layer, go ahead and do the bump mapping, click on that, I'm gonna open up my file for that bump map really, really fast. Doing this for anyone that might not have done anything with the materials, just bump maps, color maps. So we have the armor. And the armor is looking pretty rough, so I'm going to go ahead and change that from, I think it's tessellated? No, it's bump. I want tangent space normals. Do that with the body. I'm going to go ahead. This is like your backward and forwards button through the menu, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. And I want to change that to tangent space as well. All right. Now we are ready to go. We go ahead and we can go down to file. We can save this out as we choose. So I'm going to save scene as because I want to save the whole thing. I'm just going to name it. You can name it yours what you need. I'm going to name mine Titan Maya ASCII. Uh, ASCII is a little bit more friendlier for Maya to read at times because this one's more of a uh, more of like the a code in a way. But I'm going to just stay with my ASCII on my end, my personal preference. So go ahead and save that out. All right. So. First things first, I want to make sure I have no crazy history on my character whatsoever, so I'm going to select them all. Go down, I'm going to delete his history. And on top of that, I want to make sure my scene is clean before I start working as working on to the stages, because sometimes I've run into this issue before. And I need to go down to Optimize Scene Size, can be File, Optimize Scene Size. Come down to the drop window. Come down this list to where you see Remove and it's going to say unknown nodes just hit optimize now to make sure that there is no unknown nodes in this scene whatsoever because this will prevent you from being able to save out your character and we might have to work backwards but if we can avoid doing that we will we're going to save all of our templates out as we go too so if for any reason Maya were to crash during this process we can load up our templates and save ourselves tons of work instead of having to redo all everything all over again well, first thing I know is I don't need to do anything with this cloth at this time. But I'm going to keep it available because I'm going to run you through a couple of the menus and give you some brief overviews of each of each menu and what it might do or what I might use it for. Jeremy Ernst has his own series of videos that he put out there too. Uh, that's on the Unreal Engine's YouTube page. And he will he runs you through the entire animation reading toolkit a lot more in-depth than, than I will be able to do it right now. So first thing I'll do when I get my character set up, so I'll come down to Epic Games, Character Rig Creator. The World Up axis is going to be changed to Z Up because right now he's in Y Up. So when we confirm it, he's going to snap down to the ground. Our navigation is going to be a little bit weird, but that's the that's the hotkeys to be able to get this back to a normal navigation. Is just hold down Alt and hit Home. Home is like I'm going home, so Alt Home. That'll recenter your viewing back to normal again. So from here, we're gonna go ahead. We need to get this guy flipped up 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my entire character, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control G to put a group on him. Now, if you go down to Outliner, which I was gonna click here, or you can go down to Window and Outliner, you'll see that we now have our entire all of our polygonal pieces in one group. With this group we'll be able to take him and we can rotate him 90 degrees. Now we don't have snapping on so we can't get it perfectly 90 degrees back up. So what we can do is we can come down to our tool set or this button up here. I'll bring up your tools. It popped all the way down here. And with our rotational settings you can go move, rotate, and scale. Just W-E-R. So within my rotation, I want to set up my discrete rotate. And that could be set up to 15 degrees, or if we can snap it to 90, but I'm going to sit here with 15. I like, I like that in a way to be able to see it as it moves. 
I'm going to go ahead and rotate that up to 90 degrees. I can check to make sure it's on 90 by going to the channel box, which is not there. Hmm. Okay, the channel box, when the reason this isn't here is when you open up the animation rigging toolkit, it's going to toss your channel box right next to it with all the other uh, buttons that come with the animation toolkit when you begin to start rigging your characters. This happens sometimes, sometimes it might not do it. So now we have 90 degrees. We don't want any of that information within there because we want everything to be clean. So let's go ahead and we hit freeze transforms. Again, that could be found underneath our under modify and freeze transforms. So now it's going to be zeroed out. So we're good with this we're good with uh, the pol polygonal objects being rotated up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the way I'm going to select all my polygonal pieces. I'm going to click the middle mouse button and I want to drag this above that group node cuz I don't need this group node anymore. So I can go ahead and delete that node. And now we're just with the polygonal pieces and where they need to be. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be presented with in the animation rigging toolkit when we open it up is we're going to be asked about our skeleton creation settings. Now, this is going to be in a, it's going to be just a number punching set of menus that you can ask how many spine bones do you want, how many neck bones do you want. I know for this guy I only need one neck bone. For your arm options, you can have twist bones. You can also have more. You can have a number of uh, finger joints as well. Like, I don't know what the max is. I think it might be up to five. Okay, max is only three. So upper arm twist, we only need one. Lower arm twist. I don't need any upper arm twisting, so I'm gonna turn that off. And instead of having to re-enter that for the other arm, you can just do same as left. You know, drop down the other arm of the opposite appendage and just hit same as left on the checkbox. It's going to be the same thing with the legs. Now, I don't need any twist bones in the upper thigh, nor do I need any calf twisting for for my preference. And for you, it may be different, but I do want a ball joint. Now, left foot, I'm going to leave those as zero for right now. And then same as left leg as well to get the options the same on the other appendage. Now the other thing that we want to do is I know that I want to add some bones for controlling his helmet so he could take it on and off or do what he needs to do with it. I also know that when I come down to my layer menu here, I'm also wanting to get some bones for his eyes, his jaw, and I think that should be good because then we'll use morph targets to control this character's face. So this facials controls in the game engine later. So we're going to go ahead and I want to add some rig modules. And there's three different rig modules you can add. You can add joint chains, which would be great for, let's say, the cloth on this end. Where you can uh, place one joint. I'm going to call this just cloth as an example to show you what joint chains are good for. Specify the number of bones you want. So I could say I want six. I can choose the parent of that root of that joint chain. So I know it's going to be the pelvis. So I can hit OK. It's going to come up with your cloth. And each cloth piece is going to be cloth 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, up to 6. And now the parent is the pelvis. And it's going to appear in the middle of his waist. You'll see that in a minute. But I'm just going to have this joint chain in here for just an example showing you what it's going to look like for now. But I'm not going to be using that. Now I do know I need leaf joints. Leaf joints are just added joints that float around the character's mesh for wherever you need it to be. Uh, so for now I know I need I need a helmet joint. I know its root's going to need to be the head. Find that joint in this list here. There's our head joint. And okay. I know I also need two, three more joints. I need one for the jaw. Associate that to the head as well. I'm going to need the eye left. And I want eye right. Change that to the head. And make sure that uh, eye left is also on the head. Yep, see I didn't put it on the head, but I can come down and just go ahead and select that parent again. Alright. 
You can also use jiggle joints. Those are good for, say I want like as this character were to run or move, this outside of this pouch here could move around. So like this selection of faces, I could have a jiggle joint in here and it would bounce back and forth and move around. I uh, know games like Saint Row use that st use jiggle joints quite often. Just because it's a it's a candy little game, but anyhow, so we have all the joints that we want. So what we can do is we can save out our template for this, so we don't have to go back and re-enter all this information. So I can go ahead, if I click on Save or Load Skeleton Template, I want to save out my template. I already had made a template once before for this Titan character, but I'm gonna save over it because it was that really limited rig that I had before. So when I go down, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it out as a Titan for now. And then you can name it what you need. Go ahead and do a save, and all it is is just a simple text file. I'm sorry if that ping was a bit loud, but all right. So our bone template is ready to go. So in the next one, I'm going to go ahead. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start positioning our bones where they need to be. And I'll also be going through showing you a bit about the the joint chains, how those work, and I will go back and get rid of that joint chain as well. So I'm going to go ahead and call it good for this video.